As a complement to thousands of years of recorded traditional use, science has also understood a great deal about mugwort. Yet, in spite of this, a quick online search tends to yield very predictable results, referring to mugwort as a novel medicine that is severely lacking in any evidence to support its many health claims. And this is amusing, considering that the discovery of artemisinin, which is a sesquiterpene lactone present in many Artemisia species, and particularly abundant in the leaves of mugwort, was actually awarded the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 2015 due to its success in treating malaria. Some experimental drugs nowadays can arrive on the global marketplace in record time, graduating from the conceptual stage all the way to prescription medicine in a matter of months, where the priority can be persuasive and quite forceful marketing in place of testing for safety or even efficacy. And yet, cross-cultural use of natural medicines since antiquity seems to hold very little weight in today's reductionist approach to allopathic medicine. And in a way, this is a type of cultural genocide that's actually been happening for a long time already because your great-grandparents probably knew about herbs like mugwort, how to identify them and prepare them and use them at home. But despite our unprecedented access to information now, this cultural lineage has been severed and not a lot of people now even remember or even care whether herbs like mugwort can help them. So let's take a look at how pretty much all of the traditional uses plus many more discoveries are actually fully supported by this supposed lack of evidence. Both Dioscorides and Galen gave an accurate depiction of mugwort because it contains a notable quantity of inulin, which is a dietary fibre that acts as a prebiotic to the beneficial bacteria in the gut, as well as promoting healthy and regular bowel movements. Now, mugwort is also a very rich source of terpenes and essential oils, bitter compounds that can stimulate the processes of digestion, and this bitterness really helps to produce more saliva, and it acts as a cholagogue, which encourages the flow of bile from the liver into the small intestine, as well as the elimination of waste from the colon. So mugwort actually supports pretty much all phases of digestion. An Indian study from 2012 put to the test Dioscorides' claims that mugwort was an effective insect repellent. Now, in the study, Egyptian mosquitoes were exposed to a very low concentration, about 500 parts per million, of essential oils that were extracted from the leaves of mugwort, and after just eight hours, there was a 100% mortality rate. Subsequent research has also explored this potential action with other insect species like flies and beetles with very promising results. And this isn't only great news for pest control, but it also addresses some major disease vectors as well. In regards to the revitalizing and anti-fatigue properties purported by Roman soldiers, 1,8-cineol is a monoterpene and a major component of essential oils from plants like eucalyptus, rosemary, and cardamom, but it's also one of the more dominant compounds found within the aerial parts of mugwort. And among its numerous uses, 1,8-cineol is known to refresh cognitive function by acting directly on the central nervous system. And a 2012 clinical trial determined that 1,8-cineol extracts from rosemary essential oil influenced many neurochemical pathways in the brain and enhanced cognitive performance, allowing greater speed and accuracy in the processing of information. These results were of course from rosemary essential oil, but the 1,8-cineol content found in mugwort is very significant, as much as 27% according to specimens that were wild harvested in Italy. 
The anti-inflammatory effects documented in ancient Rome were no wives' tale either. An in vivo research paper published in 2021 investigated mugwort leaves and how they may be used to treat pain and inflammation associated with arthritis. The study concluded that ethanol-based extracts of mugwort contained flavonoids that inhibited certain enzymes that play key roles in inflammatory pathways associated with arthritis. The saponins and terpenes of this plant were also observed to inhibit pro-inflammatory cytokines such as tumor necrosis factor, and the sesquiterpenoids and tannins found in mugwort obstructed the activity of the cyclooxygenase enzyme which is responsible for creating hormone-like lipids that signal inflammation within the body. And this may also strengthen mugwort's ability to promote healthy digestion because of the potential to treat inflammatory disorders within the intestines. Echoing the medieval uses of mugwort for women's reproductive health, it is still used by herbalists today when treating menstrual cramps, premenstrual syndrome, and menopause. And of course, its anti-inflammatory properties will play a role in abdominal cramping, but a 2012 in vivo study also outlined analgesic effects of ethanol extracts of mugwort leaves, and how the presence of flavonoids and saponins in the extract inhibited the perception of pain, as well as working in a very similar way to non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen and naproxen. But what about the stress and emotional undulations of PMS? Well, it's now well documented in the medical field that shortly before menstruation, there is a deficiency in the uptake of neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine in the brain. And this can cause irregular moods, anxiety, and depressive states. The anxiolytic properties of mugwort were explored in an in vivo study from the year 2000 which focused on compounds extracted from mugwort, namely flavonoids and coumarins, and their role as monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Now, monoamine oxidase is an enzyme in the body that causes the oxidation of certain neurotransmitters in the brain, such as serotonin and dopamine. And once this enzyme has catalyzed the breakdown of these neurotransmitters, our mood modulation faculties can become compromised, and cognition, memory, reward mechanisms, and even our ability to learn and feel states of joy can be negatively impacted. So this study identified five flavonoids and three coumarins in mugwort as having considerable inhibitory activity against monoamine oxidase. And the potency of the flavonoid apigenin was described in the study as comparable to that of clinically used monoamine oxidase inhibitors. This same mechanism will also support older women as they transition through menopause because monoamine oxidase increases in the female body in correspondence to estrogen decline. Now, an international research paper published in 1998 concluded that two flavonoids, in particular apigenin and eriodictiol, were able to induce DNA transcription of estrogen receptors that ultimately increased the uptake of the hormone estradiol, which is the hormone most deficient during menopause that actually contributes to the majority of menopausal symptoms. Estrone is a much weaker form of estrogen that becomes predominant during menopause, but if more estradiol receptors are available, estrone can be converted into estradiol, which promotes much greater endocrine stability and helps to alleviate some of the symptoms of menopause. So the traditional applications of mugwort from medieval Europe are fully supported through scientific inquiry.
Native American medicine also favoured mugwort for a number of reasons, but smoke inhalation was a popular method for calming and restoring the nerves. And according to a research paper from 2021, mugwort is capable of reversing the degeneration of the central nervous system, which very much supports this traditional use. This in vivo research identified artemisinin, which is a sesquiterpene lactone found in mugwort, as a compound that improved both learning and memory in the test subjects. Now, artemisinin was observed to protect neurons from the loss of their mitochondria, which are the organelles used to produce all of the energy that the neuron needs to function. In this same study, artemisinin also proved its worth in the treatment of Alzheimer's disease by inhibiting the release of pro-inflammatory cytokines, which are immune cells that are involved in the death of neurons as this disease progresses. Native American traditions also used this herb as an expectorant, and a 2009 study discovered that it was indeed very effective as a bronchodilator, helping constricted airways to relax and open more for deeper breathing. And this effect was in part due to mugwort extracts regulating the activity of calcium and a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine, both of which are inherently involved in the tightening of the airways in conditions like asthma. Liver inflammation was also a common prescription for mugwort among Native American tribes, and in 2005, two teams of scientists in Pakistan conducted a series of in vivo tests to determine its potential as a liver tonic. Now, mugwort extracts were given to the test subjects suffering from hepatitis, and post-treatment examination showed an absence of liver congestion, a significant reduction in inflammation, and reversal of apoptosis, which is the self-destruction of the affected liver cells. And the conclusion of this study said that these findings scientifically validated the traditional use of Artemisia vulgaris for various liver disorders. Artemisinin was under the electron microscope again in 2020 for both in vitro and in vivo studies when it was evaluated for its role in reversing and preventing fibrosis in the liver, lungs and kidneys as well as in the knee joints and the skin. And the anti-inflammatory properties of artemisinin, coupled with its ability to inhibit fibrosis gene signaling, were believed to be the main mechanisms of action. Throughout the ages, Chinese, Japanese, and Ayurvedic medicine used mugwort as an antiviral, and a 2021 study outlined the various mechanisms through which this herb inhibits viral replication and addresses the inflammatory response caused by infection. And artemisinin compounds were again responsible for regulating inflammatory pathways and inhibiting DNA replication of numerous viruses, including influenza, hepatitis B and C, HIV, and of course, the media's favorite virus. In vivo research from the year 2000 outlined how extracts from the aerial parts of mugwort can effectively and safely reverse high blood pressure. And in the study, elevated blood pressure was induced by norepinephrine, a hormone that is very closely associated with the stress and fight or flight responses. And the extracts were observed to decrease both systolic and diastolic pressures within the heart that were caused by norepinephrine. However, the extracts didn't stimulate or subdue cardiovascular function at all in a stress-free environment, so mugwort only appeared to exhibit this anti-hypertensive effect in an environment of stress when blood pressure was raised considerably. 
In 2011, a team of scientists from Turkey set out to explore the anti-tumor properties of mugwort by testing its activity against various cell line cultures, and their results showed statistically significant inhibition of estrogen-dependent breast cancer and cervical cancer cells. A Serbian study from 2020 detailed how the flavonoids and phenols from this plant, when combined with the chemotherapy drug mitomycin C, had a cytotoxic effect on human colon cancer cells, while also offering a protective antioxidant effect on the cells of healthy tissues. So this is by no means an exhaustive list of all of the research. There's plenty more studies that are covering these benefits from different angles and different perspectives, plus other studies that are exploring new medical applications that we haven't covered here. But don't forget the script. There is no good scientific evidence to support any of these uses.